works of God. We understand the wonderful works of God as the miracles of Jesus. Jesus Christ came to do miracles among us through the power of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was in a synagogue, he opened the scriptures right after he was filled with the Holy Spirit in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, and Jesus read to them the works of, of God, the wonderful works of God is preaching the good news of salvation to the poor. The wonderful works of God is the healing of the brokenhearted. Is the proclamation of liberty to the captives. Is the proclamation of recovery of sight to the blind. Is the deliverance of those that are oppressed. Is the proclamation of the acceptable year of the Lord. What is the acceptable year of the Lord? Is the offer of a new beginning. Is the offer of a new and eternal life in Christ Jesus. Those are the amazing works of God that Jesus did when he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. And you know, my brother, my sister, if you believe in Jesus, when you have the power of the Holy Spirit, you can do greater things than this. My brothers, my sisters, my friends, how can we today proclaim the wonderful works of God? We need to be like the Christian believers in the upper room. We need to be praying. Praying. And in one accord. We need to be in one mind. In agreement. My brothers, my sisters, we need to be trusting in Jesus. Reading the scriptures to understand the will of God. We need to have the desire to do the will of God and to live in obedience to God. My brothers, my sisters, we need to forgive one another. And to do that, you don't need the power of the Holy Spirit. You need to make the decision to forgive those that offend you and hurt you. My brothers, my sisters, we need to love one another. And to do that, we also don't need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. It's a decision you make to love or to hate, to appreciate or to reject, to respect or to despise. My brothers, my sisters, we need to come together in prayer in one accord and to do that, the Bible proved it. We don't need the power of the Holy Spirit because that's another decision you need to make to live in peace with your brothers and sisters and respect their opinions, respect their positions and pray that the Lord will help you be in one accord, especially in our local churches. It is your decision, my brother, my sister, to forgive, to love, to pray together in the name of Jesus. It is your decision to love your brothers and sisters in Christ. It is your decision to show your respect 
when they express their opinions. As I'm closing this afternoon, when the Holy Spirit will come to your heart and give you the power to be a witness of the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, then and only then you will be empowered to be a witness of Jesus Christ. And then and only then will people believe in Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're in your presence, Lord. We're in your house. Lord, we understand that there is a part that we have to play in our spiritual lives. And a, a very important part to play for us is to surrender to you. And at this moment, Lord, we surrender to you. We surrender. We lay before you all that we are and all that we have. Take it, Lord. Our dear God, we are in your presence waiting for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, not just for the leadership of the church, not just for one person or, or a group of people. Father, please reign on us, all of us, in the name of Jesus. Empower us to speak the wonderful works of Christ so that others can believe. Empower us to get out of these walls of the church, of the temple, of a building and go to where people are, people who need you, people that you love. Empower us to bring them the good news that Jesus Christ is our Savior. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Amen.